Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm Bill. This is Pushing Plastic, where we discuss all things 3D printing. It might be 3D printers, it might be the slicer settings, it could be the modeling, or even new tech. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is new tech. The folks over at She2 Systems sent over this modular filament dryer. That's right, modular. And if it lives up to its promise, it can be a big game changer in bouncing your print up to the next level and the way you store your filament. Each of these modules can dry up to two one kilogram spools at a time or they can hold one two kilogram spool. Plus it can dry multiple filament types at the same time. That's right, multiple filament types. Now it can dry PLA in one of the modules while also drawing drying, say, PETG, TPU, ASA, or whatever in the other module at an entirely different temperature, and it stores it for you. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm ready to print, I want to get printing. Not sitting around for six hours or more waiting for my filament to dry. So being able to store my filament right in the dryer is a great benefit. So right now, I have some PETG sitting outside in 75% humidity. It's been out there for about 12 hours, plus the two or more weeks it's been sitting open here on the workbench. I'm going to use this to run a before and after print to see if the She2 Fellow Partner E1 lives up to the hype. But before we jump into it, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCB Way does more than printed circuit boards and assemblies. They also do 3D printing. If your 3D printer has a limited build volume or you don't even own a 3D printer, PCB Way offers high quality 3D printing services to bring your project to life. Simply upload your model, select from a wide range of materials, the quantity you want, and receive a quote right there on their website. Visit them today and enter their 3D printed mascot design contest for your chance to win $500 in cash. Prototype the easy way with PCB Way. Thank you, PCB Way. And if you could, please click the link I have in the description and show support for those who support us as makers. Okay, so we all know the problems we have when using damp filament. Ugly, stringing, brittle prints that look like they're severely under extruded after all those hours we spent printing. Now you have to go back. Dry your filament for six hours or more depending on what filament you're using, before you can even reprint your model. Well, the She2 Systems Fill Partner E1 Modular Dryer it takes care of that problem for us. It provides us a way to dry the filament as well as store it, and it allows us to print directly from the dryer or the storage box. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features. The first thing I'm going to look at is how it stores and dries. So on the bottom, we have these openings, which they sit right on top of these dryer vents. That's pretty cool. So when you, and it has, the base has these posts. So when you put it on, well, it locks it in place. That's pretty good. But when you want to store, what you do is you just take these metal plates off and you put it right on there. They're magnetic. And that's it. Now, Compared to a lot of other mod, so-called modular systems, um, what you do with those is you have plastic plugs and a rubber gasket. And what you have to do is force that into the opening. Uh, if you're lucky, you don't pinch or compress the seal. You don't break it. These metal plates, man, I mean, that's <laughs> just a nice strong magnet there. But then when you're ready to dry, you know, you, you pull them out of storage, you just pop these plates off, put them right back here so you don't lose them. And then you just pop it on the base. Well, the nice added feature is if you try to dry and you forget to take those off, well, it's just, it, one, it doesn't sit on there, right? You can see how this one's wobbly, this one not. So... Also, the unit will shut down if you don't have uh, the module on there properly. So it's almost impossible to screw that up. I will try, but it's pretty hard. 
So you take that, take those, put them where they belong, and you dump it in there. Now, the other nice thing is the handle. It's a latch. It seals pretty nice. Um, put your filament in. Yeah, let me grab one. You just take your filament, drop it in there. You do your drying. You take the whole box and you put it on your shelf somewhere. The other nice part is you can buy extra boxes. And when I last I looked, they were going for I think $39.99. I'll have to check again on online. Uh, I've checked a few others that have modular boxes that only store one. They're going for maybe $10 less. So you're getting the ability to store two for just a little bit more of the cost. It's not like it's a whole lot, $10. Um, so yeah, that, that's a good feature to have right there. I like that. And let's move on to a few other other features. The front and back of each box has this area for putting a silica pack on each side. And then what you do is you take the vent cover and you just put that on top, snaps into place, and you take your roller and that snaps right back in. Now the silica packs are for storage only to keep the humidity out. Uh, they, they don't help the drying. The drying is done by the base unit. One, two, three, four, go. Another nice feature is the humidity tags. Uh, sticks, whatever, I'm not sure what you want to call them. Indicators. Humidity indicator sounds good. And what they do, each box comes with one. Just sits in there and you snap that right into place and it'll change color to let you know what your humidity level is in your device. Another feature of the Philip Partner E1 is the ability to print directly from the box itself. It can be drying, it doesn't have to be drying, it doesn't even have to be on the unit. Just pop the caps, insert the included Teflon tubes, run your filament right through into your printer. This is a great feature if you have an E1 or A1 or an A1 Mini. Uh, you can do this on the front or the back, depending on the orientation of your dry box and your printer, whichever is most convenient. There are two tubes included for each box. Another nice feature is the latching system to get a nice tight seal when you're storing your filament. All you have to do is drop your filament in, Close it up, latch it, and you're set. Same goes for drying, obviously. But yeah, just plug that right in. Hit the power. Okay, so when you turn it on, you're going to get your system screen, and there it is. It turns on that quick. Run through some things first. Uh, right now, it's showing that any settings we're looking at are for uh, module one. And if we want to look over at module two, we just click on that and there we go. So as you can see, up the time on this one is set at four hours already over at one. It's six hours. It has our humidity level, 59%. Uh, we're currently at 21 degrees Celsius. Uh, I guess the setting for it right now is 45 if I start uh, drawing. And let's go down and check some settings here. So here you have your system settings. Um, if you prefer Fahrenheit over Celsius, you could just go ahead and hit that. Personally, I like Celsius. Everything I've done over the last couple of years has been Celsius or has been uh, with the metric system. You can turn your screen on or off, and you can also update your firmware. You check their website, download it. It has a USB C port on the device and you can put your firmware in there and go ahead and update uh, it has two pages for the settings so a lot of people when they receive their machines it's in the chinese language if you want english you just go to the second first one down system language set it for english you can reset to default which is probably chinese mine was already set to english when i got it um, and you have your manufacturer information which 
there you go so we'll return that anytime you want to go back to the home screen you can you want to make some presets for yourself you can go ahead and do that on the screen right now I'm at uh, screen one I can turn that off. I can just do it for screen uh, module two, or I can actually make them for both. Go ahead and enter your settings that you want, your temperature right there. I'll accept all that. It's already there. I'm not going to make any changes. Uh, same thing with the hours. So let's go ahead and uh, turn that back to six. There we go. And I'm going to leave those alone. Okay, so now I'm going to be drawing two spools of PLA, two spools of PETG. One of those spools I'm going to actually do a, a before and after print with the PETG. Uh, the one I mentioned that was sitting outside for quite a while. So an easy way to do that is, which one was that? Not the settings, we're in the home. Here we go, the little paper icon here. What I'm going to do is, on the main screen, is I'm already set for PLA at 45 degrees Celsius, 4 hours. So I'm going to put my PLA in Module 1. In Module two, 2, I'm going to click on that, go back to the paper icon, and it's telling me 45. I'll apply that, but I am going to take that up to 60. That's typically what I draw my PLA at. So I'm going to go 60. And normally I go six hours on my PLA or PETG. Okay. So we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and load my filament. Well, first we'll do a, a test run. And then I'll load my filament and we'll get it powered up. Okay, so for my stringing test or my print test, I'm using the simple model I got from Printables. It's for a stringing test. Pretty small. I'm going to scale this up 200% just so we have something decent to look at. And we'll go ahead and slice this, send it to the printer, and then get our filament dried up and see how it does. All right. So I have my finished before part. And yeah, got some strings and big globs on it. Uh, I'll be honest about it. I expected worse, but it does look pretty bad. This here is using Elegoo Rapid Pet, Pet G. It's gray. I've been using more of the Elegoo Rapid series. It works pretty good for me. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't get free filament. Uh, they didn't ask me to do a video. But hey, if you're watching, let me know. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the PETG in Dryer Box 2. Now, these are labeled. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. It's labeled on the base, as you can see here. So let's get the PETG in. And closed up and I'm putting PLA in box number one this is from free mover uh, it's a inexpensive PLA I bought a lot of this over the years I still use a lot of it they're both from free mover I also use a lot of a uh, uh, polymaker I do like polymaker so let's close that up and we'll turn this on. Well, it's already on. We'll hit the start and we'll get going. Okay, so the filament is dry or the filament dryer is done doing its work. I'm going to take the gray one out, Pet G, and we're gonna do an after print. This is one we did our before print with. So we'll use the same filament and we'll get going with an after print. As far as the PLA, I can take this box right now and just take it and put it right on my shelf. If I had extra boxes, 
I could just load up my next filaments into that, get them dried, and just store them that way. Which I think that's the way I'm going to be going. So let's just set this back on here for now. And we'll go ahead. We'll get this loaded up on the Creality High. I'm going to run it the same way I did last time through the CFS. Use the same exact settings. In fact, I'm going to use the file that I have already in the printer. And that way we know we're doing exactly the same print. So let's get going with that. All right. <laughs> That's a big difference. Here we have the before with a lot of stringing. The after, I'm not seeing any stringing. Everything's looking really good there. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so you saw the... Uh, she two systems e Philip Partner E one, it's a mouthful, uh, in action. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Personally, my thoughts are I like it. I really like this. I like the idea that I can dry multiple types. Uh, maybe I have a couple spools of PLA laying around, and I use some TPU, or I want to get going with some TPU. It gives me the option to work both at the same time. Um, I do have a, a Bamboo A1. Uh, I've actually had it for a year. It's still in the box unassembled. I got to get going on that. And I think this will be a great partner for it. As far as the bamboos I have back here and the Creality High with the CFS, uh, I'm pretty confident in those as far as storage. I mean, I leave my filament in there because I, I have the uh, silica packs and the humidity readers. You know the drill on that. But with these, I think it's going to really change the game for me. I like the design. I like what it does. I like the ability to print out of it. Uh, it's sturdy. I mean, you see some wobble in here, but that's just because it's coming off the box or coming off the base. Uh, I like the fact that I, when I want to store it, I don't have to jump through hoops with plugs. I just take the magnets, put them where they belong. I like the idea that if I forget to take the magnets off, it's not going to work. I'm saying magnets, I mean the metal plates that are magnetized. How's that? Um, I like the idea of being able to print right from the unit. I said it was sturdy. It has a nice seal to it. I have no problem lifting it like that. Uh, the only thing I would say that I'm not a big fan of, and it's not a deal breaker for me, is the touch screen isn't touchy enough. I, it's like you really got a hammer on it, it seems like. Press hard. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything I don't like about this. Uh, you can check it out on their website. I believe it's going for $149 right now, which is uh, right in line as far as fil filament dryers. Um, the dry bo extra dry boxes, they're going for $39, I saw when I looked. And if you go with another brand and it just stores one, you're looking at $29. So it, it's like for $10 more, you're getting twice the space. Um, think what you will about that. Let me know what you think about the unit overall. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, drop me a comment. Let me know. But I'm hoping you found the information in this video useful. If you did, let me know in the comments. Hit that like button. Smash the bell to be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe.